I have a spending problem. So today I want to walk you through how I got here, why I am finally admitting it to myself, explain my plan going forward, and propose a way that we can help each other stay on track as we strive to reach our financial goals. All right, let's jump right into it. What is going on, everyone? I hope you are all having a fantastic day. So before we get into this somewhat difficult video for me to make, I want to lay some groundwork on a few things. First of all, I am going to go over specific numbers in this video to help explain why I feel that I have a spending problem, but I fully recognize that some might agree that I have an issue, others might look at this and say that my income to expense ratio is not that big of a deal, and that I'm being ridiculously dramatic. And that's totally okay, and I'd actually love to know your thoughts on this down in the comment section below once we do get into everything in this video. I am well aware that I am not only blessed to have this good source of income at my age, but blessed to get to do what I love and make money doing that thing. So by no means am I complaining or ungrateful. Today, I just want to acknowledge the fact that I think I may have a spending problem and I need your help with that. So let's jump into the numbers. I won't give you the full long story because I have made a number of videos in the past on my YouTube journey and my income breakdown. So if you do want some more information on that side of things, then I will link to those videos down in the description below. But to summarize the whole purpose behind today's video, I really think that I have stepped big time in the trap of what's called lifestyle inflation. I've talked about lifestyle inflation in previous videos and actually why you really want to avoid it, and I stand by that belief, but by the looks of things, I haven't actually been able to replicate that belief in my own life. So less than two years ago, I was in the broke college kid phase of my life, and I had some money saved up and was already investing and all of that good stuff, but I was broke in the sense that I didn't really have any substantial substantial form of consistent income, and as a result, I basically spent no money. Flash forward just two years, and now thanks to all of you and this YouTube channel, my income is higher now than I ever thought it would be in my entire life, but my expenses have now gone through the roof as well. So first let's look at my business expenses for this YouTube channel, and then I'll take you inside my personal expenses because that's where the real problem lies in my opinion. Okay, so what you were looking at right now is just my business spending over the past 12 months. And you can see that over the past 12 months, I have spent right around $35,000 on this YouTube channel. Again, if you want a full context of my income, then definitely check out my most recent income breakdown video. But a lot of people would probably say that spending $35,000 in order to earn multiple six figures is really a healthy expense to income ratio, especially for a small business, which is how I treat this YouTube channel. And I would totally agree with that. But again, the real spending issue that I see in myself is on the personal side of things. Now, we will get to that in a second, but the thing that concerns me when scrolling through my expenses here is that it's almost entirely on what's called materials and supplies in the accounting world, also known as video equipment in my case. But it seems that it started to get a little bit out of hand and really to the point where I'm justifying equipment for that reason that I just described, when in reality, it's not leading to an increase in income and in some cases is not even substantially increasing the quality of my videos. That being said, I still do everything for this YouTube channel completely on my own, and despite my best efforts to hire designers and video editors, it just hasn't worked out for one reason or another, probably because I'm really particular. But as a result of that, I really should be able to run this YouTube channel with little to no expenses. So the fact that I spent $35,000 just on equipment and a few essential expenses is definitely concerning. But now let's jump into my personal expenses within in SoFi Relay to show you where the real issue is. I don't want to try and justify my issue by making excuses throughout this entire video, so I'm going to give you all a little bit of context once before I show you my personal spending numbers, just so that I'm not continually making excuses for different expenses as we are going through those numbers. So in the time period that I am about to show you, I bought a car, bought an engagement ring, helped pay off my fiance's student loan debt, paid for my upcoming wedding, paid for my entire extended honeymoon following my wedding, and obviously have been setting money aside for the many expenses that come with starting your life 
as an adult. Long story short, I have had a number of large expenses over the past year or so, but my issue goes well beyond those expenses, so let me show you what I'm talking about. I cannot believe that I am openly showing this to the world, but what you're currently looking at is my 2021 personal spending breakdown by category on SoFi Relay. SoFi categorizes all of your expenses on their own, and usually it's done a pretty good job, but I will say that personally, I don't go through every individual transaction and categorize it myself or double check what SoFi is doing, and maybe that's why I feel like I have an issue. Now, you're welcome to pause the video and roast me on every single individual category, but I'm just gonna go through a few that really stick out to me. First of all, I spent nearly $13,000 on shopping last year, which literally makes me want to vomit, and the worst part is if we scroll down and just do a quick glance through these different transactions, you can quickly tell that I have a bit of an overbearing relationship with Amazon. The second highest spending category is travel, and some of you may say, why in the world did I spend $11,000 on travel? And as I just mentioned, I did pay for my entire extended honeymoon up front, so that's what made up a large portion of that expense. But perhaps the most concerning category in my eyes is actually dining and drinks, as well as groceries. I guess for me, I should just say dining because I have the palate of a 12-year-old and can't stand the taste of alcohol. But what's more horrifying about that number of $4,500 is that I still live at home. The reason I say that is if you live on your own or you have a family, then $4,500 for the entire year on food is really nothing for most families. I do want to point out here that groceries are a separate category, and you can see that I spent $2,500 on groceries in addition to the $4,500 on dining and drinks. But the reason these numbers are so concerning to me is I still live at home, at least for the next few months until I get married, and the reason I say that is because my parents have been a true blessing and still pay for a good amount of my meals, which is pretty sweet, yet somehow I still spent over $7,000 on food. Like, I knew that I spent a lot of money on food, but that is a jarring number that needs to be corrected immediately. So again, you are welcome to pause the video and look through all of these numbers and roast me down in the comment section to let me know whether or not you think I have a spending problem. But the real issue is when we switch to 2022 spending, because right now we're not even two months into this year, and this trend is not headed in the right direction. So in 2021, I spent roughly $42,000 throughout the whole year, which breaks down to about $3,500 a month, which again, doesn't sound that bad. And also remember that that is in addition to the $36,000 roughly that I spent on business expenses in 2021, meaning my total spending was nearly $80,000. That is in a year where I earned over $200,000, but that still doesn't feel right to me. So again, let me know what you think of this ratio down in the comment section. But now let's move on to 2022, because like I said, things are not heading in the right direction. So let's just rip the bandaid. Here you go. On the personal side of things, I have already spent over $21,000 and I am recording this on February 24th of 2022, which means that we have not even completed two months of this year. My business expenses remain pretty much the same at roughly $3,000 a month, so adding those two months of spending to this total means that after just two months of this year, I have already spent around $27,000. Extrapolate that out across the entire year, and if I keep this up, I will spend $162,000 this year, which is simply unacceptable. Now, one thing that a lot of you might notice is that half of this chart is taken up by an other section, and that is entirely made up of wedding expenses that I have not yet categorized accordingly. And obviously, I'm thank goodness not going to incur the cost of a wedding every single month for the rest of the year. But even if we take out that $10,000 chunk, that would still mean that I've spent $17,000 roughly for the first two months. And even extrapolating that out over the entire year, I would still spend over $100,000, not including the fact that once I get married in a few months, my wife and I will be on our own, and those regular life expenses will definitely increase significantly. So I guess that acknowledging that there's a problem is the first step, and again, I don't want to downplay the hard work and progress that I have made financially over the past few years, because even despite those ridiculous expenses, I still took home over six figures last year, which I felt was pretty good for 22, and I was pretty proud of that, but 
I don't know, maybe I'm wrong on that. What do you think? But regardless, what is my plan going forward? Well, actually, it's really simple. I'm going to be using a budgeting method called zero-based budgeting. I've talked about this previously, and this is actually something that is used within the Every Dollar app, which is an app for budgeting created by Dave Ramsey. And while that is not the app that I personally use for budgeting, I do love the foundation behind zero-based budgeting. And essentially, what zero-based budgeting is, is you have to give every single dollar a purpose, even if that is just saving or investing. I think my biggest issue over the last year or so as my income has increased exponentially has been resting on yesterday's successes and as a result that's really causing me to tee myself up for failure in terms of meeting the demands of tomorrow. My life is going to change a lot over the next few months and to continue spending like I'm in Congress would be irresponsible, not fair to my spouse and not fair to myself and the hard work that I put in to earn this money. Not to mention it is simply against everything that I teach and want for all of you in your financial financial life. So from here on out, I'm going to be giving every single dollar a purpose, whether that's putting it towards a specific expense, setting it aside for a savings vault for a down payment on a house, a vacation, or an investment, or just setting money aside to buy something that I just want. Because I do think that that is still really, really important as long as it is tracked and kept under control. And I want you, if you're comfortable, to share your financial goal down in the comment section below, and then continue to comment on future videos and let me know how you are progressing with that that particular goal. All of that aside, I hope you all know how incredibly grateful I am for every single one of you. Yes, I'm talking to you right now because if I spent this much money and I didn't have this YouTube channel and all of you who continue to watch my content, then I would be in a very different place financially. So I appreciate you all and I really appreciate you listening to my little therapy session today. As always, if you did get value out of this content and you want to help support me, the easiest way to do that is actually by checking out some of my favorite financial tools down in the description below, including one offer from the Point Cashback debit card that will currently give you $100 when you open your account and make your first purchase. So definitely check that out using the link down below. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this in the future. And of course, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it so much. Take it easy and I'll see you in the next one.